This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on working with stills inside Apple Final Cut Pro 10. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to create the illusion of 3D moves by converting a still into a layered Photoshop graphic. There's one last effect which is very powerful for moving on stills that I want to show you, and it involves a multi-layer Photoshop graphic. Here, for instance, let's double-click our Photoshop image and load it to the timeline. Now, we've actually opened up the image itself. It's not edited into the timeline. I'm seeing the three different layers in Photoshop in this graphic. Let's just hide this here. This is the original image. It's my son taken several years ago where he's showing me the size of a leaf that he found. I want to do a move and make it look like the camera itself is moving, not just simply making the picture bigger, but to give a sense of three-dimensionality to this. To make that happen, I have to separate the foreground from the background. The easiest way is to rotoscope or cut him out from the background. If I hide the background, type the letter V, select the top layer, this is him isolated from the background, and this is the background with him cut out of it. Now I use the clone tool to make that black cutout area smaller so it simplifies not seeing any edges as he's zooming in or out. But to get back to the original image, make the top two layers visible. We're now going to apply two different sets of effects using keyframes so that the foreground image, my son, moves at a different rate than the background image. And to help with the illusion, I'm going to make the background go out of focus. Just so we can see what we're doing, let's put a marker in here, and we'll put a marker in here. Now remember, I'm working inside the Photoshop graphic. I'm not in the timeline. I double-click the clip from the browser to load it into the, the, a special section of the timeline where I can see the three layers. Let's select the top clip, and let's go with the top clip selected. Go up to the inspector, twirl down transform, and set a keyframe for position and a keyframe for scale. Let's move to the second marker. And because I've already set keyframes, if I were to change either of those settings, position or scale, it automatically sets a keyframe. And just to emphasize what we're doing, I'm going to make this 150%, 140%, probably better. Good. Probably 135. Okay, I like that. Notice it automatically set a keyframe. Solid diamond means a keyframe exists at the position of the playhead, and open diamond means it doesn't. Click here. And let's just pull the vertical position down just a little bit and move him just a little bit this way. Just a hair. Okay. So now as we drag across, we see the camera is moving. Well, let's emphasize this some more by going to this second layer. Make sure that we're on the keyframe. Let's just... Uh, Go back to this layer, click the left pointing arrow, put the playhead exactly on the keyframe, set a new one for position, set a new one for scale, and we'll start here. Go to the next keyframe, and this time we're going to scale this to about 115%, and we'll just move the position just a hair this way. There we go. Not a lot because I start to see that black edge in there, which is why you want to cover that. Now as I drag across, notice that I'm giving the illusion of moving in 3D, but I also have to defocus the background. Let's go to Effects. Let's go to Blur. Let's add a Gaussian Blur to the background layer. Select it. Let's set a keyframe and the amount to zero to start. Move to our second position. And again, make it go out of focus right about there. And now, let's hide some of this stuff. And now as I move this, watch how this works. Starts and zooms in, and I'm just doing it with dragging. But look at how we're giving the illusion of the camera tracking a little bit to the left, zooming in, and the background going out of focus. Now, you don't want to do this with every image because it's time-consuming to do. But for a really important image, 
There's nothing that catches the eye, like having the foreground move separately from the background when the brain thinks it's supposed to be a still, but it looks like a 3D camera move. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on working with stills in Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 222. Membership is a great value when you need to stretch your training dollars. A subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only nineteen ninety nine. That's more than 1,600 movies, hundreds of hours, all in-depth and up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.